Water Free! This is another example of kind of an average early game bug type appearing really, really late in our adventure. And for that reason, I just don't really think it's that useful of a choice because we've kind of come far enough already. Uh, if you want to get it, obviously I can't stop you. I will never try to stop you from choosing what you want. I'm just saying that it's one of those instances of just... If it was early game, I'd suggest grabbing it as is just because of that. Um, can argue against Psychic in his starting moveset. You know, it's not too terribly bad. It doesn't get the same type of attack bonus, but the special attack stat is not awful. It's just that everything else is kind of not that good. That's all I really have to say about it. B Drill. This is one of those painfully average early game bug type Pokemon. Uh, not really useful this late game. If it was early, I might suggest picking it up just to have something with high stats compared to everything else early on. But here, it's just not the greatest. Um, however, if you are raising a poison Pokemon or you want a buff on your poison type attacks, it does have the poison barb item on it, so it's at least worth catching if you're not going for 100%. You just really, really want something to uh, buff your poison type attacks, though. So it is worth catching if you're going for items. It's just that it's not that great of a Pokemon this late, and there's better poison types you could have on your team. Pidgeotto is an okay flying type, not the greatest in the world. Uh, you might want to catch it because it learns some nice moves through move tutoring. Like I said, Sky Attack is open to you at this point, which I believe it can learn. Um, it's not the greatest Pokemon that you're going to encounter flying type wise. I think there are some better ones, but want a flying type, it's kind of a tried and true thing that people catch early game. And on the plus side, it's only it's only a few levels away from becoming Pidgeot, so if you want to get it fully evolved, which I don't know why you wouldn't, you really are not going to have to wait very long for that. Raticate! This is another example of a Pokemon that I think would be good if it appeared earlier. It's just that Raticate appears very late here. It's starting moves that's about what you'd expect out of Raticate. I guess Refresh is okay on it as an exclusive move. I wouldn't say it's great, especially when you can just use items. And, yeah, Raticate, it's the fast evolution of Rattata, with Guts being the better of its two abilities. I don't really have a whole lot to say about it. That's pretty much it. Spiro is an excellent Shadow Pokemon right here. It's a nice and easy catch, and it's holding the Sharp Beak item, so if you're planning on raising a flying type of any kind, you should definitely catch this if you want that item. Not only that, but its starting moves are pretty darn good. Baton Pass, Fall Swipe, and Aerial Ice, not to mention the fact that it'll evolve the first time it levels up after you get it. Not bad. It's not the fastest flying type you'll find, but it's still pretty darn fast uh, if you want to get a faster Pokemon. Arbok is a decent poison type. Personally, I'm a bigger fan of that Grimer you could have caught earlier because it's really, really good for special defense. Arbok is just kind of very balanced. It doesn't have any particularly high stats. Nothing over 85, which kind of makes it not very good. If you're going to go for it, Intimidate is a great ability if you just want something packing Intimidate. Uh, coming with Sludge Bomb is definitely a plus for any poison type, you know, not having to get a TM or anything like that or find us anything that would teach it. Just having Sludge Bomb from the start is definitely good, so I can at least compliment it on that, but I can't really say much else that's all that great about Arbok, just saying. Saiyan True is a pure ground type. It's not really a particularly outstanding ground type, but it'll do nonetheless. Uh, the only really lame thing is, is that these Pokemon that appear in these Pokespots frequently are pretty low level, and they're not really that helpful to you. Okay, I will stop that. And this Sandshrew was actually a pretty big exception to that. It's pretty high leveled, all things considered, um, compared to how most Pokemon are in these areas. Vulpix is a very different fire type, and not in a good way. Ever since Gen 1, Vulpix got massively nerfed, and I don't know why. Its greatest stat is Special Defense. It was once special, and when it was just special, and those two stats were the one and the same, Special Attack and Special Defense, Vulpix and its Evolution Ninetales were excellent Pokemon. Uh, but for whatever reason, it just is no longer as good as it once was. Uh, if you want to raise it, you're going to need a Firestone to evolve it. We have not come into contact with a Firestone yet. It will be easily obtained soon, but you will need to wait a little while on that should you want to raise one anyway. Just warning you. Zubat is a very, very fast Pokemon. If you want something speedy, it's not going to really be winning awards in speed like my Jolteon or that Voltorb that we just had, but it's still pretty dang fast nonetheless, especially when it evolves. Good TMs for this Pokemon you could obtain throughout this game as well. Zubat, I believe, is one of only two Pokemon obtainable in XD that evolves through happiness. We already have the Soothe Bell in our possession, which makes it easier to grow happiness. Harris is a very, very weak Pokemon with a very, very poor type that has one saving grace. Despite its terrible stats, its terrible type, 
It is one of only a few Pokemon capable of learning Spore, a 100% accurate sleeping move. That is pretty much the sole reason to carry one on your team, especially in Ori where there are no HM moves. Um, Paris makes a decent enough HM slam. I mean, it learns Cut and Flash and stuff like that, which is kind of nice, but it kind of lacks anything else to set itself apart. So, if you are at all looking for a Pokemon that can, I don't know, be a good grass or bug type at all, Paris is not your guy. Um, plus side, it doesn't evolve too much later after you get it because of its nice level. It's not like in other games where you catch it at like level four, but hey. Venomoth is a shadow Pokemon. A bug poison type Pokemon that is slightly better stats wise than Butterfree and Beedrill, so I guess it's not quite as bad as being hit by the same criticisms that I gave those. However, although its stats are not the most amazing thing ever, it does have silver powder, so if you want, you know, maybe some bug type move to get powered up, maybe Mega Horn if you have access to it, that's good. It also comes with Psychic and Substitute, which I really can't argue against. Silver wins basically a bug type ancient power, though, so I am a fan of its starting moveset. If you're looking for a bug type, you could do worse. Dodrio! Do Dodrio? <laughs> Dugtrio is a shadow Pokemon! I can't even talk now. Alright, Dugtrio. Equipped with a pretty good starting moveset, Earthquake is definitely the move of choice on it. Its other moves are a little bit weird though, but hey. I like the fact that it starts off with Earthquake. Dugtrio is an incredibly fast Pokemon. It is known as the Revenge Killer for a reason. While its attack stat isn't all that big compared to some other Pokemon, it's ridiculously fast and it's just kind of one of those Pokemon you could send out in a just about any situation and it'll be able to clean up what your last Pokemon started with a nice Earthquake. <laughs> and, by the way, should you be at all curious, FINALLY we have the Soft Sand! If you've been wanting the Soft Sand for your Grand type Pokemon, this is where it is at long last. Yeah, this late in our adventure is when they give you the Soft Sand. Meow! is a very fast normal type Pokemon, especially after it evolves. Meowth is really good at attacks that you want to just kind of get off on the opponent, but you don't really care about the Pokemon staying in much. Should you want to use moves like Toxic or Indeed, like you saw earlier in the same fight, Fake Out, just to get in some chip damage or something like that, or to annoy your opponent, Meowth does a decent enough job of it. It's not like the greatest Pokemon in the world, and it definitely isn't one of the best normal types out there. But if you want a fast Pokemon that can learn lots of different moves, you know, considering that normal types can learn a lot of TMs and a lot of different types of moves, um, Meowth might be good for you in that department. Golduck is kind of unusual. It has a pretty good starting move set as it works as a mixed attacker, so it can do either job attacking pretty well. And Waterfall is still counted as a special move in this generation, so you don't have to worry about it not getting a benefit from that. That being said, however, Golduck is not the greatest water type, nor is it one of the bulkier water types, so get it if you're looking for an attacker, do not get it if you're looking for a bulky water. That's all I really have to say about it. As for its ability, I really have no preference. I think Cloud9 probably would be useful more often to you, and how often do you really see that come up throughout your adventure? I sure don't see it come up very often, but that's all I gotta say about that. Out of all the fighting types, as of Generation 3, Primeape is the fastest. If you are looking for a fighting type sweeper, look no further than Primeape. Starting move set consists of Cross Drop and Reversal, which is really not bad. Cross Drop is about as good as you can do. The Call Command being a constant X accuracy is really helpful for this as well. So if you're looking for a fighting type Pokemon to take care of business and be quick doing it, this is your guy. Growlithe, a really, really nice Jack of All Trades Pokemon. You know, standard fire type. It has good stats all around. It can kind of do whatever you want it to do. Both of its abilities have their uses. I wouldn't really say either of them is a poor ability. Um, what's really nice about Growlithe is that we were just on the SS Libra not too long ago and there is a Firestone there. So if you kept that and didn't use it, you can get Arcanine nice and easy right off the bat. Plus it comes with Flamethrower, so it's kind of good to go right as soon as you get it. Polyrath is a Pokemon. Nothing more complicated to say than it's a mixed attacker, it's more physical oriented than special oriented. This lane, I'm not really sure how useful it could be, but hey, Brick Brick and Hydro Pump are helpful, Rain Dance is an excellent support move if you didn't go for that TM earlier. Water Absorb is of course the more useful of its two abilities, but that goes without saying. And you know what? I think I'm gonna do use the Rain Dance. I'm just feeling kinda lucky with it, and I don't think anything else on his team would really benefit from it all that much. Weaving Bell is a grass type that I've always felt is semi-underrated. It's not a Pokemon I see talked about a lot, and I understand why a lot of people don't use it. It is slow like most grass types is the uh, grass types are, but it's not a it's kind of a jack of all trades. You can teach it just about any move, it'll be pretty good at using it. Starting moves at a sludge bomb, which is really nice. Magical leaves, not great, but I am a fan of the fact that it comes with sludge bomb without the need for a TM or anything like that though, so 
That is pretty nice. Uh, if you're looking for a grass type, once again, just like I said for Venomoth, you could do worse than Weeping Bell, I'll say that much. Rapidash is a Shadow Pokemon. This fire pipe Pokemon is incredibly fast, as you would guess by its name. I mean, seriously, how would you ever think a Pokemon not named Rapid Dash was fast? Rapid Dash has a really interesting starting move set. It's got Sunny Day and Solar Beam, as well as Flamethrower. Flamethrower is going to be benefited from that Sunny Day as well. Uh, you can use Solar Beam in one turn. If you can use Solar Beam in one turn if you have a Sunny Day up. The only thing I don't get is why is Baton Pass its starting move? I'll show on screen right now what its support moves are, but it just doesn't really make much sense to me. It just seems like kind of a random thing to have there. It doesn't have any starting moves that it can pass on to its other Pokemon, um, on other Pokemon in your team. Um, I suppose Flash Fire is the better of its two abilities if you want to go for it. It's not a bad fire type Pokemon, it's very fast. The only real downside is that its attack stat is bigger than its special attack stat, and it's kind of a shame given what its starting moves are. Aside from that though, it's a bit of a sweeper. Magneton is kind of an interesting Pokemon. I'm a fan of its typing. It's got really nice special attack. It does kind of have its problems. It is a little bit vulnerable because of it not being the fastest Pokemon in the world, especially for an electric type. But if you are looking for an electric type and you do not have one yet, you might want to consider this just for the simple fact that it comes with Rain Dance and Thunder. That's really, really not bad. If you are looking for a Pokemon that can Thunder Spam, look no further. This is a great Pokemon if you want to have it do that. Uh, it's level 30, which is a little bit low level. It's not horrible. It's just that it's not really like, you know, I'm starting to feel like Pokemon that you're snagging can't really get into the fighting immediately like they could before. That's really all I have to say there, though. I'm a pretty big fan of Magneton. Its evolution of Magnezone, of course, is not available to you here. For those of you that don't know the uh, generation splits and all that stuff. Farfetch'd, as many of you know, is an incredibly weak Pokemon. It has the normal flying type, and it's in the same dang room that you can catch Dodrio, for that matter. Baton Pass and Swords Dance, I suppose, makes it at least somewhat useful, but it's got no stat over 65. I guess at the very least I could say that it's probably the best setup for a Farfetch'd you could ever hope for, in that it has that it has both uh, Aerial Ace and Slash on it starting off, and it has the stick as its hold item, which makes Farfetch'd have an increased critical hit ratio, but... Aside from that, there is no reason to pick this Pokemon up, aside from self-imposed challenge, or maybe if you just like how it looks. It's not a good normal flying type, it's so, so late here, as Lavrina would say, and it's just not that useful. Dodrio! And you know what? I think Dodrio will make a fine addition to the team as our last member. I know that there's some people that are going to be a little bit opposed to this, but I feel like its type fulfills good roles. It's immune to Earthquake, and it gives us an answer to those fighting types that we're weak to, even though we won't be coming across them too often, and that's not all that important to me. I just feel like that flying type attacks do complement what we got going on here really, really well. Not only that, but as you know, I'm a big fan of Baton Pass, and it starts out with it. You can pass those agilities onto other members of your team. And as you know, I have a fair few members of my team that are kind of slow, so it can be used for support. Not only that, but out of its starting moveset, Drill Pick is pretty much the best move you could ever hope for on Dodrio. Same type of attack bonus with that is brutally strong. And speaking of brutally strong, Dodrio hits very hard and it hits fast. So I'm a fan of that. Only thing I can say I'm not a fan of is the fact that its abilities, quite frankly, suck. Early Bird's obviously the better of the two, but it won't be the end of the world if I don't get it on mine, just because both of these really are not that useful that often here. Seal is a Shadow Pokemon. When this evolves, it becomes a water ice type, much like my Sfeel. If you want my personal opinion on Seal versus Sfeel, besides the fact that one just has a really awkward sounding sound at the beginning of it, um, Sfeel I think is better in terms of stats. So the final evolution of Sfeel I feel is better than Dugong. Now, that being said, I don't think Seal is necessarily a bad choice. Even though I think stats wise my Sfeel is better, this one comes knowing Surf, which my Sfeel can never get in this game. So, for those of you that wanted to get something like that, I can definitely recommend this Pokemon if you want something that knows Surf, as there are limited options. And having Surf in a game full of double battles is absolutely fantastic. So, if Sfeel didn't answer what you wanted, but you still didn't really mind the typing, you might find what you're looking for in Seal. I don't normally recommend it in Pokemon games, but here, can't argue with it naturally knowing Surf, and even if you don't plan on raising it, it naturally comes with a Mystic Water equipped to it, which is great for any Water-type Pokemon, so... If you plan on raising any water Pokemon, you should catch it regardless if you're going for 100%. Grimer is his shadow Pokemon. This is one of my, I guess, more favorite poison types. It comes with Sludge Bomb, which is an excellent move starting out. 
Um, Grimer, even though its stats would not have you thinking it prior to its evolution, once it evolves into Muck, it becomes pretty good at standing up to special attacks. The only real problems with this, though, one is that you're going to be waiting a long time for it to evolve. A long time. The other thing is, as you can see, both of its abilities do absolutely nothing in XD. Uh, Stench is meant to repel wild Pokémon that has no effect here because you encounter Pokémon differently. Not only that, but Sticky Hold, uh, the attacks like Thief work differently in XD, and they don't have their added effect, so yeah, doesn't work. Shelder starts off as a pure water type. It becomes a water ice type after it has evolved. Not the greatest type in the world, but when it evolves into Cloister, this becomes an awesome physical wall. It's no fortress. It's not going to be quite as resilient as something like that, and its type definitely doesn't help it, but it has offensive capabilities that Pokemon like Fortress and Shuckle don't have. It can deal out damage in addition to absorbing physical hits really, really well. Uh, not only that, but as you've noticed, it comes with Surf and Takedown, which you'd probably get some pretty good damage out of on this Pokemon, as its attack stat is higher than its special attack stat. And of course, being Water type, you get the same type of attack bonus Surf, which everyone loves in double battles. So, if you want to use Cloyster, the last game before it got nerfed as a defensive wall, feel free. Hypno, however, is kind of a mediocre at best psychic type, if I may be brutally honest. Its biggest stat is Special Defense. Formally, its biggest stat was Special before the two stats were split back in Gen 1. And the thing is, it was not a kind change to Hypno. It has Psychic and Shadow Ball in its starting moveset, which is kinda nice, I suppose, because it's got equal attack and special attack. It has Baton Pass, um, so if you want to pass those Meditates onto something else, you can do that from the start, and it doesn't learn Baton Pass normally. So for those of you looking for a good exclusive moves, Hypno has at least got a nice one in Baton Pass. It is going to have either Soundproof or Static for its ability. You can't really metagame this, it's just going to be random whichever one you get. If you want to raise the Voltorb, I highly recommend Static for the ability so that you can paralyze your opponent upon making contact. Now, as for Voltorb as a Pokémon itself aside from its ability, it is incredibly fast. In fact, if I am not mistaken, it is tied with Jolteon for being the fastest electric type once it evolves into Electro. Doesn't take that long to evolve either beyond its current level, it takes decently long, but the main draw of this Voltor, aside from the typical things you know about it being a fast electric type that can also explode, is that it comes with a magnet. So if you're raising an electric type of any kind, you definitely want to catch this particular Voltor because it will always have a magnet on it when you get it, which will power up its electric type moves. Or the electric moves of any Pokemon that's holding it for that matter. Executor as a Pokemon has a really strange type, I have to say. But hey, it's got Psychic in its starting moveset and Hypnosis. It would be really helpful to you in snagging Pokemon if we weren't at the end of our adventure. Special attack stat is huge. It's a bit of a glass cannon, though, in the fact that it is very slow and grass is not a very good type defensively. Uh, you can make it, a, of course, definitely faster if you have Chlorophyll activated, though, but it's not really the best option for a sweeper out there. Marowak is a Pokemon. It comes equipped with the Bone Club. Why is this important? It also has Swords Dance. Through Swords Dance and Bone Club, Marowak does ridiculous. Ridiculous damage! It's very slow, and it is a little bit of a glass cannon, and even its HP is kind of low, complementing its defense, but this thing hurts. If it can get off that Swords Dance and use Earthquake, man, this is potentially the most powerful Earthquake you will come across in this journey through Ori. Just say it. It's really freaking powerful. Hitmonlee, at least before the physical special split, is what I believe to be the better of the two Hitmon Pokémon. That sounds kind of weird. Hitmonlee has Minor Reader and High Jump Kick, which is kind of nice. Mega Kick as well is kind of inaccurate, so Minor Reader is nice to have. Only downside is you have to use it every time that a new Pokemon gets sent out. You can't just use it once and the effect of it remains for the rest of the fight. But he has good starting moves, and his attack stat is really, really nice and big. Him and Hitmonchan have very comparable stats, but I just feel like Hitmonlee's moves as well as his ability, just kind of make him the better of the two Pokemon now. Hitmonchan definitely becomes better in the next generation, at least I think it does. But for now, Hitmonlee is a good Pokemon. Not only that, but he's got a black belt equipped to him, so if you're raising a fighting type Pokemon of any kind, you'll want to pick him up just so you can have that item. Hitmonchan is a shadow Pokemon. This is a, well, I'm sure you would know that it's a physical attacker based on its type alone, and in fact it is a fighting type Pokemon we've encountered since getting Zangus. But again, it's a Shadow Pokemon, it has no offensive fighting type moves it can use on us right away, so not really a big deal to me, I don't count that. Anyway, on to Hitmonchan as a Pokemon. Has the move Helping Hand, which, you know, that's kind of nice to have. Um, can raise the power of your ally though, but Hitmonchan's not really built for support. Don't get me wrong, it's got not bad special defense, but I wouldn't really use it as a support Pokemon. 
What I would use it for is an attacker, and starting out with Sky Uppercut and Mega Punch is definitely not bad. Personally, I would use Sky Attack and uh, Sky Attack, Sky Uppercut in all situations, and I pretty much would ignore Mega Punch. But you know, it's not horrible. It's there's definitely far worse Pokemon out there you can get. The only downside is that the physical special split has not happened yet. That happens in Diamond and Pearl, so a lot of attacks like Fire Punch that you might want to teach it and stuff like that. Not going to be counted as physical, and its special attack stat is laughably low. The other thing is, Iron Fist is not yet an ability, so it doesn't get a buff from using attacks that have punch in the name. So just be forewarned about that. Aside from that, not a bad physical attacker, just has limited options in the way of attacking before the physical special split. Lickitung is a very slow normal type. That's not to say that Lickitung is explicitly a bad Pokemon, but it does miss out on some potential as its evolution of Licky Licky is not available to you here. It's decently bulky, does alright damage if I can really use any words to describe it. It's not really going to be winning any awards. Its starting moveset does have the defense curl rollout combo, which makes rollout do more damage if that means anything to you. Aside from that, it's a normal type, it's bulky, it's not the bulky normal type that we all think of when we think of first gen Pokemon, but it's something. Rhydon is a ground rock type, having some common weaknesses. That being said, however, it has excellent stats. It does its job and it does it well. Lots of HP, defense, and attack. It really hurts. Not only that, but its starting moveset complements it really, really well with Mega Horn and Earthquake. Personally, I think Rockhead is a bit of a better ability, especially if you're trying to snag it because then it can't hit itself with recoil damage, but that's just me personally. Both abilities have their uses, especially in double battles, so keep that in mind. Chansey. This is bar none the best special wall in the game. And it's evolved form Blissey, really. And you do have the Soothe Bell to help you evolve it into Blissey, should you so wish to do that. As for Chansey as a Pokemon, though, like I said, it is a fantastic special wall. Comes with the Lucky Punch item, should you want to use that. It is an exclusive item for Chansey that gives it a high critical hit ratio. And, all in all, if you want something to stand up to special attacks, there is no better Pokemon in the business. Starting moveset isn't all that bad either. Can argue with Thunderbolt. Uh, once it evolves into Blissey, it gets a not too shabby special attack stat. Only real warning is that you might not get it to evolve into Blissey before the end of your journey. That's all I can really say about it that's bad. Tangela is a very slow kind of average grass type. Kind of cool thing is it was the first pure grass type Pokemon in existence. Everything was either grass poison or grass psychic or just, you know, dual type in general back in Gen 1. In fact, I think I named both of the grass types already. Um, Tangela is just kind of an average grass type. It doesn't have a whole lot going for it that sets it apart. Um, you got the ability Chlorophyll, which is kind of standard, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, it has Morning Sun and Sunny Day, which is kind of nice. The fact that it has Morning Sun as an exclusive move here is really nice. It does come with Solar Beam as well. The starting moveset's not bad. Uh, it does have Miracle Seed if you want to catch it, just because you're raising a grass type and you want that item. Uh, its evolution of Tangrowth is not available to you, however, so for those of you that don't know the generation differences, Tangela does not evolve here. So you're kind of stuck with it just kind of being a defensive grass type with pretty good special attack and really, really bad speed. Kangaskhan has a really cool starting moveset. Earthquake is a default move, can't argue against that no matter what type of Pokemon it is. As if all that wasn't enough, Kangaskhan is very much a jack of all trades, and pretty much everything but using special attacks, it is at least halfway decent. So I can say plenty of good things about this Pokemon. It's not the greatest Pokemon in the world, but hey, good starting moveset, decent stats, Really, really nice diversity because it's a normal type, of course. If you want it, go for it. Starmie, as I always say, is a tried and true Pokemon. Since the beginning of time and even to this day in, future, in generations later than this, Starmie remains an excellent force to be reckoned with. Its typing of water and psychic gives it off awesome offensive capabilities with same type attack bonuses. Only thing that I can say about it offensively here is, that's negative is the fact that it doesn't come with a psychic type move when a lot of psychic Pokemon do come with psychic. So it's a little bit disappointing that you have no offensive psychic type moves right off the bat though, but hey, I guess you could always use TMs for that. Aside from that, it's a fast Pokemon, it has a really nice special attack stat, it's pretty good at standing up to attacks, not amazing, but good enough. And yeah, everyone loves Starmie. It is was pretty much king of the metagame back in the days of Red and Blue, if not for Tauros and Snorlax. Those were kind of the other two that stood tall alongside it, above everything else. And only recommendation I can make for Starmie besides teaching it a psychic day move on your own is the natural cure is obviously the better of its two abilities. Mr. Mime is not bad. It is a special sweeper with really good special defense, so it has the ability to do two different jobs. It might not be the fastest Pokemon, and some might not get really considered a sweeper for that reason, 
But hey, you could do worse than Mr. Mime. Psychic and Thunder Punch and starting moveset gives it some decent coverage. Can't argue against Psychic on it right off the bat, considering what we just encountered a little bit ago not having it. But yeah, I used Mr. Mime myself in the past, and it served me well. Scyther is an old favorite of many fans of the series, and indeed Scyther can evolve if you equip that metal coat we got a while back and trade it. Problem is, the trading is not available to you during the main story, so if you decide to pick up Scyther, be forewarned, Scizor is not available to you. That being said, however, Scyther is a faster Pokemon than its evolved form Scissor, if not as powerful, so it definitely has its pluses there, should you want to do that. Uh, its ability Swarm is, is complemented by Razor when it's starting moveset, so I guess that's kind of nice. Uh, Bug is counted as physical, I believe, in this generation. I hope I'm not wrong about that. But yeah, Scyther is faster than its evolution, and there are pluses to using Scyther, of course. Something worth considering if you don't have a bug type already. Electabuzz. Ha did you not pick up that Ella kid before? Here is it in all of its evolved glory. It does have Cross Chop, which is definitely a plus. Thunder Wave is also excellent for snagging Shadow Pokemon, and you can have access, um, you cannot have access to Shadow Off and Thunder Wave at the same time, which is kind of a shame, but hey. Um, Follow Me is a move that I find really interesting in double battles. It makes it so that all Pokemon on the opponent's side will attack you and not the other Pokemon in the field. It's kind of something that I've found interesting over the years. But as for Electabuzz, it's fast, it has decent enough special attack, it's not the best Electro type around, but hey, it's not terrible either, especially not when you got limited options. Pretty much it. Magmar is not one of the most stellar fire types out there for the traditional things that fire types do. It's decently fast. But what sets it apart from others is that it's a mixed attacker. It's not particularly good at special attacking over physical attacking. Both of its stats are very, very close. And its starting moveset is complementary of this. It has an excellent starting moveset. Fire Blast, Cross Chop, and Thunder Punch. I can't argue against it all for starting moves on this thing. If you're looking for a mixed attacker and there's a spot for a fire type in your team and you don't have either of those things by this point, by all means, this should fulfill your needs very nicely if that's what you're looking for. Pinsir, in my opinion, is a very underrated Bug-type Pokémon. There aren't a whole ton of good Bug-type Pokémon, but Pinsir is one that stands out. It has beefy physical defense, which, while that's not really the better of the two defenses for Bug-types typically, it hits really freaking hard. It's not going to be winning any awards in terms of speed, so it's not really much of a sweeper, but it does hit hard and it can stand up to some physical moves quite nicely. That being said, Pinsir's starting moveset has got a one-hit KO move in it, and you have the Call Command, which is an X-Accuracy. That is a dangerous combination. If you want Pinsir, it's also very good at it's also very good at helping you snag Pokemon if you want False Swipe, and yeah. Uh, also worth noting is that Hyper Cutter, its ability, has not yet been nerfed. In Gen 5, Hyper Cutter was changed so that only your opponent trying to lower your attack stat is stopped. But here, it does not have that nerf. Tauros is a ruthlessly strong Pokemon. Intimidate makes it able to stand up to attacks it would not be able to stand up to otherwise. And to boot, the fact that it is only weak to fighting makes it really, really good in this way. Not only that, but of course being a normal type, it has great diversity in the moves that it can learn, and it hits very hard. Tauros was a competitive king along the likes of Alakazam and Snorlax back in the day. This thing should be feared by everyone. Lapras is last Pokemon. And it's a Shadow Pokemon. Level 44, Water Ice type, Water Absorb or Shell Armor for its ability. Shadow Shed, Shadow Sky, and Shadow Storm. Almost forgot. Is very, well, it's very all over the board. It has a lot of HP. It doesn't have the best typing in the world, unfortunately. But hey, it is, you know, it's two decently good offensive types, even though it's not really the best type defensively. That's really all I can say about it. I personally like Lapras a lot. It has some nice starting moves, especially that Rain Dance Hydro Pump combo. Excellent support if you don't already have a Rain Dancing Pokemon. That's pretty much it. Eevee is, as you know, a very versatile Pokemon. It's not really one of the better normal types out there, but it has the capability of evolving into one of five different Pokemon in this particular game. And I want to get into its evolutions later, but just so you know, this is an excellent idea for a starter Pokemon. Giving you the same starter Pokemon as everyone else, but letting you choose what you want it to evolve into is a really cool concept, and I wish another Pokemon game would do this again, because we got more EV evolutions now. I feel like this was a brilliant idea on their part, letting us start out with an EV. Vaporeon has some nice offensive capabilities with Water-type moves, but its main draw is the fact that it has a ton of HP and can really, really tank hits. So it's kind of an all-around type of Pokemon where its strengths lie in defenses. Um, it has the nice ability of Water Absorb, which in this particular game is awesome because you're doing double battles a lot. 
you're actually able to make your Pokémon target one another with their attacks. Which this sounds like it's really stupid, but in Vaporeon's case, it will regain HP if targeted with a Water-type move. So you can just heal Vaporeon for free in various battles. This thing is great for taking hits, however, I will warn you. One of the biggest draws of using water types in games with double battles is the move Surf, as it hits both of your opponents, and in this game it does not hurt your ally like it does in later installments. Problem is, there is no Surf HM in this game and Vaporeon does not learn it normally, so if you want to use Vaporeon for using Surf, you're not going to be able to do that. Second, Jolteon! This thing is an awesome sweeper, one of the fastest Pokémon in the game, going to be going first in almost every battle. Not only that, but one of the difficult things that comes with Jolteon is that TMs for moves like Thunderbolt and Thunder can be kind of difficult to obtain in some games. Not so in this particular one. Uh, you can get a hold of a lot of TMs as well as move tutors for Jolteon pretty early on. Just about any good move you can think to teach Jolteon is obtainable fairly easily. Not only that, but it does have Volt Absorb, so the same principles apply with Vaporeon that you can heal it by targeting it with one of your other Pokémon's moves. Flareon! Ugh, I always want to say good things about you, but I'm always at a loss. Listen, Flareon, it's not that I don't like you. You're a cool-looking Pokémon, and you have potential. It's just not here, okay? Flareon's largest stat is Attack, and it's a pure Fire-type. Big problem already, because all Fire-type moves were still considered special at this point in the series. The best move it really gets for using that large attack stat is Double Edge, which, I guess to be fair, isn't that hard to teach it, but it's just that it has such weird stats for being a pure fire type, and it just does not complement the kinds of moves that it learns whatsoever. It's the only EV evolution that I would have a hard time recommending to people, and the only one that I would really say is subpar. If it makes you feel better, if you want to use Flare even still, it does have Flash Fire, which powers up its fire type moves if you hit it with one. If you're looking for a challenge or you just really like Flareon, by all means, I obviously can't stop you, but Flareon is just so much missed potential. I'm sure everyone knows Snorlax is king. This thing is bulky, it hits hard, it might be slow, having speed equal to that Lickitung we fought earlier, but hey, it's friggin' Snorlax. And its starting moveset is large and in charge just like it is. Comes with Curse, couldn't ask for better moves on a Snorlax. No Fidger's kind of unreliable, but hey, you have basically an infinite use X accuracy available to you at all times in the form of the call command. Can't argue with any of that. Excellent Pokemon. Personally, I'm a bigger fan of Thick Fat, especially when you can just use items in single player. But that's it. Snorlax is great. Always has been. Couldn't recommend it enough if you don't already have a normal type. It's pretty darn good. <laughs> all right. Articuno, though. It also has three exclusive moves. I'm personally a fan of Heal Bell. The other two moves are all right, I suppose, but it's mostly Ice Beam where Articuno really shines. Its biggest stat is oddly special defense, and I find that kind of strange because Ice is not really a good defensive type, and Ice Flying isn't either. Back in the days of Blizzard having higher accuracy in red and blue, Articuno was much stronger. It's not as strong now, but if you want an Ice type, it's definitely faster than most of your options out there, and it is a little bit more resilient, if only because of its stats. Zapdos is the best of the three legendary birds, at least in my opinion it is. Thunderbolts and Drill Peck are really all this Pokemon needs to be good, and it's got one of those in its starting move set once purified. Its speed and special attack are excellent, are excellent. Its typing is great, being only weak to ice and rock. It has a nice immunity ground as well. I can't say enough good about Zapdos. Moltres, one of the three legendary birds. This is the first time we are seeing not one, not two, but three exclusive moves that a shadow Pokemon knows that it can't know elsewhere. Will-O-Wisp is a really, really cool move. It is the only attack that just burns and nothing else and will always burn every time it is every time it connects. You have Morning Sun, which is an unusual healing move to have on Moltres. It gets amplified by the weather, if that makes any difference to you, if you have a weather team. Um, extra Sensory, I don't really see that being all that useful when the Moltres has special attack to back it up. And Flamethrower, of course, that's mainly what Moltres needs. It has decent stats across the board, but its strengths mainly lie in special attack, as you can see. It is a sweeper, but it has kind of an unusual type that has some common weaknesses. That's kind of the only downside of Moltres here. Well, some people argue Dragonite might not have aged too terribly well in the fact that it's much slower than a lot of other Dragon-type Pokémon. It is still a decent Pokémon. Has really, really nice attack, has that handy immunity to ground, especially in double battles, and it's pretty bulky, so it makes up for its slowness in other ways. The only real warning that I have with Dragonite, and really the only negative thing that I could say about it, is the fact that your Dragon-type moves are going to be calculated as special moves in Generation 3, aka here. So if you're planning on using Dragonite here in XD, just be warned that your Dragon-type moves are going to be calculated as special and not physical. So keep in mind that your physical move pool does not include Dragon-type here. Uh, it's got plenty of physical moves, and it is part flying type, if that tickles your fancy, but that's really all you need to know.
But wait, you say to me! Isn't there another award that you should have gotten besides those Poke Coupons for clearing all 100 floors of Mount Battle? Well, yes and no. You will get an additional reward for clearing all 100 floors, that's 1 through 100, without ever leaving the mountain or using the PC at the 10 battle mark to change your team at any point. That reward is that you will get one of the Johto starters. And, and that might sound really, really weird, but they know special moves. Chikorita will know Frenzy Plant, Syndicate will know Blast Burn, and Totodile will know Hydro Cannon. At this point in the series, Bulbasaur, Charmander, and Squirtle were the only Pokemon capable of learning those moves. However, since then, every starter is capable of learning those moves, so... Is it worth it at all? Honestly, no. It really is not, as much as I hate to say it. You really should not waste your time doing floors 1 through 100 without leaving the mountain. It's just tedious, and you if you want to get all three starters, you have to do that three times. I'm not kidding! You have to beat Mount Battle three times to get those. But while I go and purify the remaining Shadow Pokemon as they are ready to open the door to their hearts, I would like to go over these Pokemon, because there are Pokemon that you can obtain, even though it's kind of too late to really use them in your adventure. So first off is Chikorita. This is probably the most mediocre grass starter that has ever existed. Um, it kind of has the same problem as Superior these days, where it doesn't get the status moves that you expect from a grass-type starter. Uh, and on top of that, it doesn't really have a saving grace like Sceptile, where it's really, really fast. I mean, it's faster than most grass-type, sure, but I can't really say it's that great of a Pokemon. It's definitely challenging to use, I'll say that. And to make up for its low stats, it does learn some nice moves like Razor Leaf at very low levels, I'll say that much, but other than that, Chikorita is just, you know, pretty much good if you're looking for a challenge or if you just really, really like how it looks. I gotta say, I think it's pretty cute. Second off, Cyndaquil. Everyone loves this guy. He's cute, he's powerful, this guy's got it all. And to top it off, his stats are equivalent to that of the Charmander family, so if you grew up using a Charmander, you can jump right into using Cyndaquil's playstyle totally. I don't feel like its moves are as diverse as the Charmander family, plus it doesn't become a part flying type, but you know, I guarantee you like at least something about Cyndaquil, and while he's not the best fire type starter to ever exist, you know, he's decent. Last up is Totodile. This is an interesting Pokemon having a bigger attack stat than special attack, despite being a water type. It's a mixed attacker. Personally, I don't feel like Totodile quite reaches its full potential until Gen 4 when the physical special split happened, but that's just me. It's not a bad Pokemon by any means, but like the other Johto starters, it definitely is not the best starter of its type that's ever been made. Bloody but might seem tempting. It evolves at a low level, and it actually comes with some not bad moves. I mean, heck, Aerial Ace is an excellent move, and it gets same type attack bonus with it from being a flying type. The problem with Lediba is that even when fully evolved, its stats are pretty bad and its type doesn't really do it any favors. Bug Flying is not one of the better types, and not to mention, its ability Swarm is downright useless. The only worthwhile bug type move that Lediba or Ledian can even learn is Silver Wind, and that's only through breeding in this generation, which you can't even do in XD. So, it's not one of the better bug types, but I suppose if you want something to use Aerial Ace on your team early on, it's there. Spinarak is one of those early game bug types that evolves at a pretty low level. You know, you might say, like, you know, those are, like, never good and you should just ignore it, which, I don't know, I, I suppose I could see, like, why you feel that way, I can fully understand why, but slightly more worth considering in this game than in others. I will try not to use the two words that I always use when saying why some Pokemon that aren't as good are worth considering in this game, but in all seriousness, it does have the move Signal Beam to start out, which is really nice, that's a pretty powerful bug type move, you know, decently so. Let's imagine the fact that here the Swarm ability actually will see some use, unlike on Lediba where you can't learn any bug type moves to actually use it with unless you breed. Which you can't even do in XD, so why give it that ability? This Togepi is very, very interesting. It's one of few Pokemon that can evolve through happiness. And you can indeed just keep this Togepi for good and evolve it and use it on your team if you want Togetic. Uh, Togetic and Togepi are more defensive Pokemon more than anything else, which is kind of weird for a normal type, later a normal flying type. Its starting moves are indeed really, really cool. I'm a fan of Tri-Attack getting the same type of attack bonus. You already know how I feel about Ancient Power and single player games. If you want my personal opinion, I would say Serene Grace is the better of the two abilities just because normal types learn all kinds of cool stuff like Flamethrower and Ice Beam and I really, really like how you get increased chance from that. But yeah, this Togepi, not a terrible Pokemon, but after it is purified, this guy will ask for it back. And if you t give it back to him, there is something really interesting for you. We'll be going over that later. Natu is not one of the absolute best psychic type Pokemon, but it's decent, I suppose. Now, you might see that it comes with Baton Pass normally, which you might think, like, oh, I, you know, I can use Combine and I can pass on those special attack and special defense buffs to the next Pokemon I send out. That's awesome. 
Not quite. It doesn't learn Combine through leveling up, and the Combine TM in this game is very hard to get. Like, you will not be obtaining it during the main story. So, don't count on that. Mareep! This is an electric type that I think all of us who played the Johto games growing up or present used early game. Unless, of course, you're playing Crystal because you can't get it. Everyone used Mareep early game just because there's something about early game electric types that have a bit of a lure. Mareep, while not a bad Pokémon for single player, is slower than most electric types. Most electric type Pokémon, including the others that this guy is using, especially Electric, are generally very fast and tend to go first. Heck, look at my Jolt, look no further than my Jolteon for that. Mareep won't really get that for you. Mareep is a little bulkier than other electric types, but it kind of lacks the speed. However, it does naturally know Thunder Wave if you don't want to use up the Move Tutor on that, so that's kind of a nice option. Uh, it does get Thundershock after you purify it. Not only that, but the move Heal Bell it has is really interesting. Basically, that makes it so that you can heal status problems on other Pokémon on your team. So, it's not a bad support Pokémon either, and it's really, really cool that it has this move because it is not in other games. Hopip, your favorite Pokémon and Jay Witz's. It's a grass flying type, which is kind of odd. It has a fair number of weaknesses because of that. It's a more unique grass type, I just don't find that it does things better than other grass type Pokemon do all the same. And I can't really say I'm a big fan of the type. It might also be tough to raise though because Hopip is kind of weak. Only real good thing that I could say is that Hopip at the levels that you catch it at is pretty close to evolving already. So you won't really need to worry about it being a Hopip for long. But yeah, Wooper. This is a water ground type. Very, very good type. Only weak to grass. And it evolves to Quagsire at level 20. You'll get it evolved like immediately after you catch it. It should be useful to you rather quick. And definitely get water absorbed for its ability. That is invaluable in a game full of double battles especially. It's awesome. He's bulky. He's got an awesome type. He evolves soon after you get him. Only downside is he's very slow. Gonna be going last in just about every battle you use it in. Espeon. This is another sweeper. It's slower than Jolteon but packs more of a punch. I've personally used Espeon in two previous Let's Plays that I've done, and it served me well in those. The only real warning that Espeon comes with is that it's going to be a little while before you can get good moves to use its big special attack stat with. It doesn't quite have it as easy as Jolteon does when it comes to getting good moves early on. But all in all, if you can get through the early parts of the game, Espeon is definitely rewarding later on. Umbreon. If you're looking for a good wall, this is your guy. This thing can tank hits really well, has a handy immunity to Psychic, and... You know, it is one of the better walls that you can obtain in the entire game. The only problem is that it doesn't do all that much damage and you're probably going to struggle early game with it. But if you can get through all that and you're looking for a good wall, it will reward you in the long run to go with this one. Pineco, albeit a little bit difficult to raise right now as we don't have an experience share or anything like that, it will evolve into one of the absolute best walls in all Pokemon. If you're looking for something defensive with a nice immunity to boot, both to poison and the poison status, yeah! This thing does an awesome job as a wall. Um, the only real warning that I could say is that it's pretty much just strictly a wall. If you wanted to do offensive stuff, pretty much its only option to do a lot of damage is explosion. But if you want something to set up on your opponent with, you want something to really, really stall at your opponent, this does a great job. It's second to none. Gligar. This is a really strangely tight Pokemon. Flying and ground is really, really unique to say the least. Thing is, Gligar gets a pretty decent evolution in an upcoming game. Problem is that at this point in the series, they didn't have that evolution. So if you want to raise it, what you see here is what you get. Personally, I like other ground types and other flying types more, but that's just me. Surskit may be given up for Shuckle. If you're looking for a wall, Shuckle's defenses are second to none. It might not have the most HP in the world, but this thing is the true definition of a wall. While well, I think that Foratress has a better type than it, can't really complain about those stats if you wanted to wall stuff. Only problem is that it does not have the same offensive capabilities that it gets in later generations. So be warned about that. This is strictly a wall, nothing more. However, that being said, you might have noticed its starting move set is excellent. Its starting move set is pretty comparable to what most people have on competitive level shuckles. So, yeah, substitute, toxic, I would not have anything different as my shuckles first two moves. Teddy Ursa, you might notice that it has the move Refresh at its move set and it's marked with a star. What does that mean? Well, when you're playing Pokemon XD, you're going to be catching Pokemon that know moves they could not normally learn. Whenever there is an instance of this, it'll be marked with a star. In this case, Refresh heals Teddy Ursa of problems like Poison and Paralysis, so it's kind of a handy move. Basics aside, Teddy Ursa is a Pokemon that I feel like you should keep in your party regardless if you plan on training it or not, because it has pickup for its ability and that's always nice early game to get free items just from having a Pokemon in your party. 
Aside from that, Teddy Ursa evolves at level 30, which is quite a ways away, so it's going to be tougher to raise it than it is in other Pokemon games where it's typically higher leveled. But if you can get it all the way up to Ursa Ring at level 30, it becomes a powerhouse with the awesome ability of Guts, which raises the tax out whatever it's inflicted by problems like poison or paralysis. Which kind of makes Refresh feel a little bit pointless, but hey, I guess it gives you a little bit of freedom in how you want to use it. Macargo. This is a very strange Pokemon. I gotta say, I like the pun, Magma Escargo. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just, I like puns. Anyway, starting moveset is not bad. Uh, Heat Wave, Earthquake, Flamethrower, great mixed attacking moveset. Unfortunately, its stats don't complement this very well. Only 50 attack to break down an Earth, to uh, crunch an Earthquake that is already kind, is already weakened by the fact that it's hitting both opponents in a double battle. His other moves aren't that bad, but the main draw of Macargo is its defense, and uh, most unfortunately, quad weaknesses to ground and water. So for those reasons, I'm not too big on this Pokemon. But hey, Flame Body is a nice ability if you want it to wall stuff. Can't say anything bad about that, but that's really all I have to say. Swinub is an ice ground type. While it's a unique type, and some people might be interested by that if you're doing kind of like a unique type like a run, Swinub has a fair number of weaknesses due to its type. And it's one of those Pokemon where it evolves in a later game, and it would be really nice if it evolved here, but it just doesn't. So I feel like Swinub kind of falls short of potential. It does have some interesting moves on it for, I guess, being a Swinub, if that interests you at all, but unless you're really, really into what you see here, I'd kind of pass on this one. Houndour, yes. If you can catch this Houndour, this is an excellent early game fire type. It has a great special attack stat, which complements both of its types really, really well. Pretty fast early game, evolves at a decently low level, and if you can help it, Flash Fire is by far the better of the two abilities that you want to get for it, and that is great because you can soup it up with Pokemon on your own side of the field. Even though it does get a handy immunity to Psychic with its Dark type, there aren't really that many good Dark type moves at this point in the series. Crunch is the absolute best you're going to do, which, well, it's not horrible, it's not really amazing compared to the best moves of other types, I'll just say that much. But Either way, you're probably going to have some trouble catching this one because it is by far the lowest catch rate of anything we've encountered up to this point, but if you're looking for a good fire type, definitely worth adding to your team. Fan P, and okay, fine, I know you guys are going to bug me if I don't do it. Oh my god, I found a Fan P! Okay, there you go. Fan P has served me well in a previous Let's Play. It is a defensive ground type with offensive capabilities. While not the most spectacular ground type in the world, I personally like it a lot. It learns the good ground type moves, it is, you know... It can tank hints and deal out damage as well, that's pretty much it. You might remember this guy who gave us Togepi. Oh, hello, is my Shadow Togepi doing? Oh, the Togepi in your party is my Togepi, isn't it? You finished the purification. Oh, thank you, I'm so glad you're back to normal Togepi. Now, may I have my Togepi back? I'm willing to trade you an Elekid. I've been raising a return. Would that be okay? All right. So, you can keep this Togepi for yourself, and if you want to raise it into a Togetic, that's fine. I've heard Togetic with Serene Grace teaching its Sky Attack is really, really broken if you like doing that. But, I think I do want to trade away this Togepi. Now, this Elekid that you get is no ordinary Elekid. First off, you will see that his name's Zaprong. Interesting choice for a name. But, this Elekid is very, very special. Why is that? Look at that excellent starting moveset. Ice Punch, Fire Punch, Thunder Punch, Cross Chop. I guarantee you that if you want to raise an Elekid, or rather an Electabuzz or an Electivire of any kind, two of the moves you want in its final moveset are already there. Really, really nice. These are moves that people breed to have on their Elekids. They are that good. And even if you don't want to use it on your team, you might as well trade it up to a later generation of Pokemon and use it there if you want to have an Electivire with some nice moves. A lot of the moves that you want are already going to be on it, but should you want to raise it here, Elekid does not have Electivire accessible to it in this generation. You can only go up to Electabuzz. That being said, he's not horrible at dealing damage, just not as good as he could be. Uh, he does not have the ability Motor Drive available to him either because it's exclusive to Electivire. But should you want to raise him, just be forewarned that he needs to grow 10 levels to evolve because Elekid is one of few baby Pokemon that evolve specifically at level 30 and not through happiness. That's really all I have to say about that. If you give Duking your Wooper, he will give you Larvitar. Oh boy, this is an in-game trade you want to consider if you have the chance to do it. Look at those starting moves. It's got Dragon Dance and Outrage. Dragon Dance plus speed and attack in one turn. Are you for real? That's a move that people breed to get on Larvitar because it's so good. 
Outrage is a special attack here, so be forewarned about that. It's not horrible if you're using it on a Larvitar, but just warning you that it's not quite as awesome as it could be in later generations. As Tyranitar, it gets the ability Sandstream, which summons a Sandstorm just for it being sent out into battle. That Sandstorm also lasts for the rest of battle unless it's overwritten by another weather effect. If you have a team that benefits from Sandstorm, this is probably the best that you could ever do. Not only that, but anybody would attest to Tyranitar being a complete and total powerhouse. Seriously. If you don't mind having to go really, really high up in the levels in order to fully evolve it, and you have the ability to do this in-game trade, definitely consider it. Lugia as a Pokemon. Grievel said that it is not able to be purified. I'm not sure if I believe that or not, but that is how things stand right now. Although it may look different, it is just as strong as any other Lugia. Its stats are greatly geared toward defense, but are excellent across the board. Despite its typing, Lugia is very resilient and is the true definition of a tank legendary Pokemon. And believe it or not, its ability of pressure is an excellent ability for it. Normally, pressure is a bit of a throwaway ability. When you are resilient, able to take a lot of damage, pressure is great because you're wearing down your opponent's PP much quicker as you are walling them. So, excellent ability there. Of course, it has the nice immunity to Earthquake. I shouldn't have to say that. Now, all that being said, this is incredibly challenging for you to catch. Do I recommend you use your Master Ball here? No. But, this is the lone time where you can have a Shadow Pokemon join your group after you have snagged it if you have five Pokemon in your party. For that reason, you might want to go into this with only five Pokemon. That is indeed a good strategy to go about this should you want to. Poochiana, a pure dark type. If you're looking for a Pokemon to fill a void not filled by Umbreon because he didn't choose it or something like that, you won't really find that with Poochiana. What you will find is a Pokemon with the excellent ability of Intimidate once it evolves. But aside from that, it's not really an outstanding Pokemon all in all. It's not one of the better Dark-type Pokemon, but again, uh, the Coliseum and XD games do have limited options, as I said many, many times in my previous Let's Play, I know. But if you're looking for an early game Dark-type, this one does evolve at a fairly low level, and you won't really need to wait it out like you would with some other Pokemon, such as this Teddy Ursa. So I suppose if you're looking for a Dark-type, you could do worse than Poochyena. It's not that good in other Pokemon games, but hey. Might not be too bad in this, in this one. What's really nice, actually, is on the subject of Intimidate, lowering your opponent's attack, is that it works on both of your opponents in um, double battle, so that is especially nice here. C-Dot. This is a decent Pokemon in double battles, especially. If you have a Pokemon that has uh, Sunny Day on your team, which you'll get a lot of opportunities to use in the game as primarily double battles, good news. You can potentially have Chlorophyll on CDOT. If you can help getting its ability, uh, if you can help getting the ability you want, like saving before this battle and catching it again and again to get the one you want, you definitely want Chlorophyll because it goes from just being a so-so Pokemon that doesn't have too terribly much of a purpose to being an actually pretty decent sweeper, especially once it evolves. You will need a Leaf Stone to get it to its final form, but you know, the moves that it starts out with are actually pretty nice. I would probably keep Giga Drain throughout most of the game. Refresh isn't too bad either. Yeah. Uh, great for sunny day teams, and especially if you have a fire type on your team that you want to pair it up with, having two Pokemon benefiting from sun at the same, from strong sunlight at the same time, that is awesome to do in these games. Swellow is a Pokemon, really, really friggin' fast. Not as fast as say my Jolteon, but still really fast. It's got Baton Pass and Agility as starting move set. It also has Sky Attack, which I've stated being a fan of in single player. And if you want to do more damage, it does have guts for its ability. Should you want to strategically target it with status moves with your ally Pokemon? That's really all I can say about it. Ralts is a pure Psychic type. It is not part Fairy type. It cannot evolve into Gallade. Nothing like that. Um, Ralts has two abilities. As you can see, the one that I'm fighting here is Trace. If you can help it, I would recommend Synchronize for the ability over all others. Um, all in all, it's a good special attacker. It's a good pure Psychic type. Not one of the finest ones to ever exist, but it's still decent enough. And if you're looking for something that can do the same job as Espeon, by all means. It's not quite as powerful in the damage as Espeon, but oh, come on. But, um, yeah, if you want something like that, they might be able to fulfill that job for you. Surskit. This is an incredibly rare bug type with really not that outstanding stats. Um, if you want to raise one, more power to you. It becomes a bug flying type when it evolves and it gets the great ability of Intimidate, which isn't common among bug types. But it's just that it's so rare and it's just so weak. It, I don't know. I, it's not really a Pokemon that I recommend stressing out over. Shroomish! The cool thing about its moveset is that it comes with False Swipe, which always leaves your opponent with at least 1 HP. Would have been really helpful for me when trying to catch that Carvana earlier. Uh, don't remind me. So Shroomish can make catching Pokemon a lot easier, which is one positive to it. But aside from that, 
Really, really interesting Pokemon. Its ability Effect Spore will make it so that Pokemon physically attacking it can get inflicted with various status conditions. Uh, Shroomish evolves into Breloom, which is a grass fighting type. Now, while Breloom is not quite as good in this game as it becomes down the line in the series, it's still not a bad Pokemon by any means, and if you're looking for a, I guess, another mixed attacker because it does grass type moves and fighting type moves well, not to mention it has the ability to inflict statuses like a lot of grass types do, uh, you might find what you are looking for in a grass type here in Shroomish. Uh, I've used one before, not in a Let's Play though, but on my personal time, and I gotta say, I kinda like it, I like it a lot. Early game, there's a lot of Pokemon that attack physically, and it makes it so that you inflict a lot of status and ailments on Pokemon without even really having to try. Mugate is meant to be more of a tanking fighting type. Its biggest stat is HP, as strange as that is. That's not really a thing that you see all that often. And those that might want a tanking fighting type, you know, you're only weak to psychic and flying, you might like that. Makuhita isn't one of my more favorite Pokemon, but I guess it's a bit of an interesting note that I could bring up, is that... Oddly, Makuhita is more difficult to catch than its evolution. Yeah, it's a Evolve Form Hariyama, which you will get very, very soon after you begin raising it if you choose to, which is a nice plus. For whatever reason, Mak uh, Makuhita has a lower catch rate than its evolution. Don't know why that is, it just is. Nose Pass is a super defensive rock type. Not just physical either, its special defense ain't half bad. It's very lacking in the HP department though, so I'm not really sure if it's the best tank in the world, but it is a very defensive rock type. And this Nose Pass in particular, once purified, knows some really cool moves. Helping Hand is not bad for a slow Pokemon that might not get to attack too often. Uh, Thunderbolts, can't say enough good about that. Thunder Wave would be great if you want to snag Pokemon and don't have an electric type by now. And can't argue with Rock Slide, it attacks both of your opponents and it gets the same type of attack bonus. Its attack stat's not really that great, and what's really a shame is that it does not evolve in this particular game. Uh, so you have to worry about that. For ability, I would recommend Magnet Pull because Sturdy did not get his Gen 5 buff yet. Delcaddy is not a very good Pokemon. Normal type with no stats over 70 at all. Uh, it's just that, it's not that it doesn't learn good moves, like most normal types, it has a lot of diversity in the types of things that it can learn, it's just that it never gets to take advantage of anything. It's really a shame, because like, its stats are just so low. I wish Delcaddy would get an evolution, but as it evolves from Skitty with a Moonstone, I don't think it'll ever happen. Now, even though Delcaddy is not good, this is probably going to be the most challenging catch we have had yet. Reason for that being is that Delcaddy has an insanely low catch rate to everything else that we have fought. And it kind of sucks, to be honest. I'm really, really not a fan of this Delcaddy because it really, really hurts to fight this thing. Sableye, uh, excluding the fairy type, which obviously didn't exist at this point. I KO'd Golduck because I got a critical hit. Excluding fairy type, obviously, which doesn't exist here. Sableye has no weakness. And while that is nice, Sableye comes very late in our adventure. A lot of strong Pokemon we're coming across, and unfortunately, its stats just don't really cut the mustard. But... If you do want to pick one up, I couldn't really ask for better starting moves on it, and at the very least it does have Helping Hand, which could be useful to those who just want... Who just, I guess, just who want a, a Pokemon that can use Helping Hand each turn to boost their attack strength. Moelle is one of those awkward Pokemon that feels like it should have an evolution, but it just doesn't. It kind of sucks, though, because I feel like Moelle has at least some potential, but it just goes really, really unrealized. It does not have a Mega Form, none of that. It is just as you see it right here. If you're going to raise one, I at least recommend Intimidate for its ability over Hypercutter, which I believe this one had when it came out, but it's, it's not really the greatest Pokemon in the world, and it's definitely not going to be winning any awards anytime soon. So be warned about that. Aron is indeed the Pokemon I want to catch for my team. This is an incredibly defensive Pokemon. It's got the stats to say that it's a huge tank, it's got the typing to say that it's a huge tank. Only real downside is that it has a quad weakness to both fighting and ground. That's kind of lame. It's really the only thing bad that I could say about it. If you're going for a, a specific ability, I would definitely recommend Rockhead, as there's some really, really good recoil moves that it can be taught. Sturdy's just not that great of ability prior to Gen 5 when it got a huge buff. So that's really the only that's really the only thing I could say about looking for specific Arons is going for that you may give up your Trap Inch for a Metatite. Do I think this is a good deal? Hell no. But if you happen to have Trap Inch laying around and you were planning on raising it up, you might want to consider this. As for its moves, it comes with Dynamic Punch, which is a really powerful fighting type move that will always confuse if it connects. This is great, considering that the call command is basically infinite X accuracies. Shadow Ball is normally a really awkward move that does physical damage in Gen 3 and lowers your opponent's special defense, but here on a mixed attacker, it might actually be useful to you. 
Main Electric is a Pokemon. It's not really too interesting as an Electric type. It's fast and it has high special attack. It's very bog standard on what you would expect. It does outspeed quite a few things, and both of its abilities have their uses. Static is, of course, a useful ability, and Lightning Rod is excellent for double battles if you want to send it out alongside something that is weak to Electric attacks. I said a mouthful. It has Rain Dance and Thunder in its starting moveset, so if you wanted to take advantage of that, you can. Roselia, if it had its evolution of Roserade in XD, it would be a fantastic special sweeper. Not to mention, oh boy, the fact that it learns Toxic Spikes is awesome with how fast it is. Unfortunately, Toxic Spice doesn't exist and neither does its evolution, so all in all, Roselia is just kind of an average at best uh, Grass Poison type. And there's a billion Grass Poison types out there. So, if you want a Grass Poison type, you're pretty much better off choosing anything else, though, because it's one of those Pokemon where it's just a shame it doesn't evolve, because I love Roserade. I really do. Roserade is fantastic. I can't get enough of just how good it is. It's great. The awesome Pokemon, Gulpin. Okay, well, I shouldn't exactly say it's too awesome. It does not truly know Toxic, even though everything in its dog can learn that via TMs. Um, it's kind of an interesting Pokemon. It's kind of a jack-of-all-trades, if you will. Its biggest stat is HP of all things, which I wouldn't really expect from a poison type. Um, I kind of wish that it's his coughing or his Grimer was the shadow Pokemon that you could snag, because those are really awesome defensively. Gulpin, I feel, is just kind of trying to be like a combination of the two, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. I just don't like it quite as much as other poison types, but if you're just kind of looking for a poison type that can do the general things that a poison type does, it's kind of nice. Not to mention the two moves that you get by purifying it, Shockwave and Sing, are kind of interesting moves for it, to say the least. Carvana. Water Dark type is an interesting type, to say the least. Those of you who like using Greninja, I'm sure you will agree with me. Um, Carvana, while not one of the best water types, has a decent type coverage between water and dark for special attacking, but the real draw of Carvana comes not just from its ability of rough skin, but from the fact that it comes with the item Black Glass. If you are considering raising a dark type Pokemon of any kind, you want to catch Carvana even if you're not going for 100%. Nummel is a fire ground type. It is weak only to water and ground. You have a quad weakness to water, however, which is a decently common type, so that hurts it a little bit. However, whatever you might say about it, it does get the same type of attack bonus from Earthquake, which is definitely helpful in this particular game. And while I don't think it's as good of a fire type as, say, Houndour, it does work well as a mixed attacker as it can do special and physical damage with its typing. Not only that, but regardless if you plan on raising it, if you're going to be using any fire type Pokemon on your team, it might be worth it to pick it up, just for the simple fact that it comes with charcoal equipped to it, which powers up fire type moves. So if you're raising a fire type Pokemon of any kind, you should catch this regardless if you plan on actually raising it. Trap Inch. This of all things becomes a really powerful dragon. Uh, once it evolves into Vibrava and later into Flygon, it's actually not a bad Pokemon. It is pretty darn good. A dragon in ground is an excellent type, that's what it becomes. And really, like any other dragon Pokemon, you're going to be raising a near useless Pokemon for a long time to get it. So you're going to be struggling with this for a while. We don't have an experience share yet. Well, there is one in this game, we just don't have it yet. But yeah, if you want to raise a Trap Inch, you will struggle a lot, but it will pay off in the end. Altaria is an unusual flying dragon Pokemon. Yeah, we're actually finding dragon types here. It's very, it's strength lay in its defenses rather than its offenses, making it kind of unique in that respect. Now, Solar Beam is a bit of a random starting move for it. I can't say that I'm really a big fan of that as a starting move for it, but at least it has Aerial Ace and Dragon Breath, which will be useful enough to you. Uh, it comes with the Dragon Fang, so if you just have Dragon-type moves that you want to power up, it's at least useful for that. So I can at least say some good things about it, although not all that many. It's still something. Um, all that aside, Natural Cure is an excellent ability. You have the ability to switch out, unlike trainers, so you might as well catch it if you want to have a bulky flying Pokemon. That's really all I can say about it. Zangoose is a physical sweeper of, nor of the normal type. While normal might not be the best type for a physical sweeper, its stats are really not that bad for attacking. It's got a decent amount of HP like most normal types do, and you really can't argue against its starting moveset. It comes with Crush Claw, having it a few levels early. Brick Break is an excellent move to teach it via TM normally, and it comes with it once purified. And I don't know, I just really, really like Zangoose. Even though it doesn't really have the best same type attack bonus stat for being a physical sweeper, it makes up for it in the diversity of moves that it's able to learn. So call me a fan. Lunatone. It has the exclusive move Baton Pass, which might sound good at first, but it lacks the ability to learn Calm Mind through leveling up, and like I said, the TM is not easy to obtain in XD. However, it has the excellent starting moves of Psychic, Rain Dance, and Rock Tomb. 
As of right now, you cannot get the Rain Dance TM, so if you're using a Pokémon that relies on using Thunder, it's a valuable asset to your team. It also isn't too bad in the way a special attack, and that Psychic will definitely hurt. This is a lot sooner than it would normally learn it through leveling up. So, it has some really, really great moves, to say the least. Not to mention, it comes with a Hearthstone, so you might as well catch it even if you're not going for 100%, because you're going to want that hold item if you're raising a Rock-type. Soul Rock is a Pokémon. I like his starting moveset. Baton Baz at Cosmic Power is definitely interesting. Sunny Day, if you didn't already pick up the TM, is great, but Psychic brings me to my problem with Soul Rock. It has a tiny special attack stat. It's its lowest stat! So if you want this to do damage, it's not really going to be able to do it. It does have a decent enough attack stat if you want to teach it rock type moves, but I just find it a little disappointing that special attack is its lowest stat of all when it's got a psychic type there that it could be using for that purpose. And the thing is, Lunatone has a 95 special attack and is the exact same type, plus it knows psychic from the get-go and you encountered it in your first battle with Snaddle. So I feel like if you wanted to use Solrock, you would already be using Lunatone because it's kind of better at the things that you would typically want it to be doing. It does have Levitate for its ability, which is great, so I can't say that it's irredeemable if you want to have Slaying Immune to Earthquake and to take a few hits, but I can't say that I like it as much as that Lunatone before. Plus, that Lunatone even had a hold item. This doesn't even come with anything like that. Unless you really, really wanted to use Soul Rock and Lunatone as a duo on the team, like I suggested earlier, for those who just might want to do that, because I always thought that was so weird in 3rd gen how they introduced duos like Plusle and Mine, and yet there were barely any double battles in Ruby and Sapphire. So even though they are kind of powerful when fighting together, it just doesn't make sense, because you're not going to get to use their Plus and Minus abilities together all that much. So that was just kind of something that I always was bothered by, was just the fact that you didn't really get usage of those things. Baltoy has a good offensive type of Ground Psychic. This allows it to do both physical and special damage, and its stats com complement this decently well. However, the main draw of Baltoy comes from its pretty good special defense, which gets even better as it evolves. Not only this, but it has the ability of Levitate, making it exceptionally useful in a game full of double battles. You'll be seeing Earthquake all over the place, and you yourself might even want to use Earthquake as it hits all Pokémon in the field. If you're afraid of it hitting your ally, don't worry, Baltoy is immune. Not only that, but the attack Psybeam and Rock Tomb this early game, very high damage. You can bet this thing will be doing a lot of damage if you get it on your side. Bayonet. This is one of very few ghost types you can obtain. You had the chance to obtain Duskull earlier, and personally, I feel like Duskull is the better option because it's defensive and it hits hard. Bayonet's not as defensive, but it does hit harder. Not only that, but it comes with a spell tag item, so if you're looking to raise a ghost type of any kind, you might as well catch this Pokemon. Um, should be an excellent choice no matter what you're going for. Not only that, but you also have the fact that its starting moves can't argue with Shadow Ball when it's a physical attacker. Can't really say anything else about it. It's a decent enough ghost type. I personally prefer the Duskull family that you could have caught earlier, but hey, Bayonet is here, it's fully evolved, and it's good to go. Duskull is his Shadow Pokemon. This is one of few ghost types you can obtain in XD. It's not quite the only ghost type, like Mistrevis was in Coliseum, but it's still one of few. Duskull is incredibly defensive. This is one of the better tanks in the game. It has Levitate now, it will get the ability Pressure when it evolves, so you will lose that ground immunity if you choose to raise it and it evolves. Uh, thing about Duskull is that even though its evolved form Dusclops gets another evolution in a later Pokemon game in Dust Noir, you really don't need it. It still does an awesome job as a tank, even without being able to evolve into Dust Noir. So, if you're worried about not being able to fully evolve your Duskull to the point where it can evolve now, don't worry about it a bit. It is still a great Pokemon defensively. Snow Runs is not a very good Pokemon. Pure Ice type, while I like Ice type offensively, it is the worst pure type in terms of number of weaknesses. Uh, which, I wouldn't make that immediately something that you should discount a Pokemon with, but Snow Run is a special case. It is one of the worst Pokemon in the game. Its Evolve Form Glalie only has 80 across all of its stats. It has no outstanding stats, it's below average at best on every last stat that it has, and it just does not do as much as plenty of other Ice types do. So if you're looking for an Ice type, look elsewhere, because Snow Run really isn't that great. Spiel is a Water Ice type. Really, really unique in that regard. While Ice types typically aren't very good defensively, Spiel complements its Ice type quite well with Water. Uh, its weakness to Steel is nullified. Another nice thing about it is that its ability, Thick Fat, complements it very well. It doesn't take normal damage or fire, it still resists it anyway. Spiel is also one of very few Pokemon that has an Octo Resistance thank to, thanks to its ability as well. Now, Spiel, one, just like Vaporeon, does not learn Surf, which is a little unfortunate, and it is something that does kind of let me down a little bit about it. 
However, it does learn some other really good moves, as we will see as I raise it. Not only that, but it's starting out with Aurora Beam is so powerful for early game, and I can't say enough good about it having Aurora Beam this early on. Salamence is a powerhouse. Has excellent stats all around the board. It is a force to be reckoned with. Immunity to Earthquake, it makes it a great fit on any team in double battles. Not only that, but its starting moveset having Dragon Dance in it right from the get-go is pretty much the best thing that you could ever want in a Salamence starting off. Only real warning is that Special Attack is where the Dragon-type moves are going to be calculated from, so you might... It might not be quite as good as it is after the physical special split, but that's kind of the thing. It has shadow moves, and shadow moves can be physical or special. I've kind of alluded to this before, but saying it out right here, it can be physical or special.